Let's take a look at an interesting pattern for red light made by Sansi. Now, Sansi is the same brand that I looked at recently who make the unusual ceramic core LED lights. And the first thing I'm noticing with this pattern for red light is that it doesn't have the normal polyethylene, polythene lens in the front, the Fresnel lens that uh, creates uh, strong patterns across the sensor when a human walks past it. So I'm interesting to see how they've actually done this, if there is a lensing system or if they've got some unusual uh, approach to that. The back twists off. It has a little tab that pulls out for hanging from a screw or double-sided tape, if you wish, and it twists off and reveals three AAA cells. AAA cells aren't my first choice for stuff like this, but it's very common. Um, a AAA cell has about a third of the capacity of a AA cell. I'd rather use bigger cells, but there must be a reason they always go for the smaller ones. Let's see if we can spudge her into this and get the cover off. First indications are that it's either very, very tight or it's actually glued on. No, 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 hold on. Oh, is this going to break? It's unclipping, but it is very well clipped in. My apologies if there are any loud snapping, popping, clicking noises. The microphone tends to pick them up and kind of saturate, resulting in a very high audio peak. This is not. This is not going to be pretty. I may have to pause. Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe not. Right, I'll take it away from the camera briefly. Just to try and unclip this. It is unclipped. Here is our, it almost looks like radar, doesn't it? But it's not radar. Oh, okay. Oh, it is for now. I don't know if you can see that. I'll zoom down it. But this is a opaque uh, infrared transparent thing. Can you see the row of dots in it? That pretty much indicates what's it seeing. Those uh, dots there that creates this strong pattern that goes across the sensor. Does this come off? Not easily, no. I won't just pull it off. I will try to pull it off. No, I think it's uh, riveted, maybe. Not really sure. Um, I shall pop this out further. I don't see anything really specifically holding it in here. Oh, that might actually be this is somehow holding it in. I don't think so. Uh, pulling it with force does not seem to have any good effect. I don't really want to break things. There is a light sense down here, I notice. Has Oh, you know what? Oh, right. Okay, that's going to make things trickier. I'm going to have to desolder this. The circuit board has been placed onto the battery contacts once they, were, once they were in position. And that appears to be what's holding it in place. One moment, please. And resume. Let's explore. The date in this is quite... Recent, it's right in the middle of the COVID pandemic, 2021. It did desolder from these two points. These are the things that was holding it in. The positive one desoldered fairly easily. The negative one did not desolder easily because it's got a large ground plane on this side and the other side and the pad is directly on those. It's not got separation tracks. That would have been nice for taking it apart, but I guess they're not really thinking of it being taken apart. I did have to bring in reinforcements. I had to bring in the little soldier iron with its huge bit just for that extra mass to try and get that to melt. Quite tricky. There are one, two, three, four, five, six LEDs on this side. There is hackability. There is the pass and Fred center. The grey uh, cup here is captive. It's actually held in by this sensor being soldered in. It is a smart sensor. And there's a little photodiode next to it. Phototransistor or photodiode. I'm going to say photodiode. If we take a look at the circuit board itself, a lot of the work has been done by that module. So the module is located under here. I've just basically zoned off. Let me show you the back of this to give you a perspective on this. Uh, the area you're looking at here is just this little rectangle here, just because it lets us zoom in the components a bit more. And it's basically the sensor. It's got a three volt voltage regulator to provide a stable voltage, oodles of capacitors, and then three potential dividers, one with the light sensor, and the other two are just fixed voltage potential dividers for setting time, delay, uh, sensitivity. And the one with the photodiode is for the output uh, enable, which is the basically the dusk sensor. 
The switching device, it's driving a tiny little MOSFET with a 100k resistor in series and a capacitor there, just presumably to, it doesn't cause it to fade away slowly or anything like that. It, it does go out straight away, I just guess it's filtering. And then they've left their options open here. There are two 20 ohm resistors. If you want to hack this for lower power, just chop one of them off. Uh, if you, for some reason, wanted to use a module for higher loads, then you could add more resistors to actually lower the combined resistance since they're all in parallel. Let me show you the schematic. Oh, I should mention. I found a data sheet for that chip. The BS612, the pass infrared sensor, I found it at Adafruit. Adafruit actually stocks those. They're very affordable. So if you need a password infrared module, Adafruit may be where you need to go. So here is the supply. So that's three times AAA. You could swap that for a lithium cell if you want, I think. Um, and the unregulated supply, 4.5 volts, goes straight over to the LEDs, which are in parallel, and then the resistor array, which is in parallel and then down to the MOSFET which is a 72k alias a 2N7002 a very classic MOSFET but a slightly modern one I think the difference between the 7000 the classic one the 7002 is this one has more protection than the input which is quite good and there's a the little capacitor and there's the 100k resistor quite odd they've used the capacitor there but that's fine there's a 3 volt regulator NO1F with a capacitors on the side, there's actually another two capacitors on this side, but I abbreviated it, so let's just say times three. There's oodles of decoupling. It's quite well designed. Uh, there's the sensor, and it's quite interesting the way it works. It's got the light level, which is a fixed threshold, which is a two megaohm resistor, and then the photodiode. Uh, it does offer, suggest in the data sheet, uh, various combination of resistors just to fine-tune that value. But in this instance, the I guess they've just chosen this as a generic component that works well with 2 megaohm. And the other ones are all based on a 1 megaohm resistor going to the positive 3-volt rail, VDD, uh, and then a resistor going to VSS, or 0 volt. So, you know, it's so confusing. There, there are so many names, the positive rail and the negative or 0 volt rail. And these form potential divider and present a voltage. And it doesn't matter how much the what the supply voltage is to this chip. It's looking for a ratio of voltage to the positive voltage versus the zero volt rail. And by setting the potential difference, it it's an analog converter inside. It sets a binary counter to determine the time delay and the sensitivity. It's uh, all digitally processed by the look of it inside. And that is more or less it. This lens, although it looks opaque with its nice Sansi logo in the front and those cute Fresnel patterns in the back. Very odd. When I looked at it with the thermal imaging camera, you could see the outline of your finger very dimly passing behind it. So it is blocking a fair amount of the light, but it is also, you could see the distortion because it was having that lensing effect. So they've kind of basically turned the sensitivity up and they've relied on this as being perhaps less ideal than a perfect lens purely because uh, it, it pr improves the aesthetics. It makes it look nice having this instead of the sort of usual translucent dome in the front. It is quite a smart effect. Having said that, this is all translucent, so it wouldn't really have shown that much. I think they were just making a statement. So that is it. The most interesting part of this is the BS612 passive infrared detector. The way those work, they have two sensors in them, and uh, they're configured... So they sort of act against each other. Um, I think they're in series. And uh, they drive a little field effect sensor normally in a passive infrared sensor. And as you walk past, the your heat signature generates a slight voltage in those sensors. And because there are lenses, Fresnel lenses here, which is just... The Fresnel lens is the one that's made of sort of stripes of glass. And it means you've got a very flat lens as a, the equivalent to a uh, big lens. When you walk across, it focuses your heat into a point of light that moves across those two sensors. And because it then undulates quite notably, it actually uh, can detect that. But the ambient thermal output of the room that it's normally looking at will actually cancel itself out by those two opposing sensors. It's very straightforward. It's a classic thing. I always thought this was going to be radar initially, but radar is not as efficient as these. I measured the quiescent current at 18 microamps in the off state, 
on this circuit. And that is it. So, very simple. Three volts for stability, the passive infrared module does it all, and then just switches the LEDs on via this tiny little MOSFET. And that is it. Uh, very interesting and smart little device.